What's up, ladies and gents? Simstrain One, your host, and today we're going to take a look at EA Sports UFC 4, which is going to be releasing on the 14th. But uh, through EA Access, you're able to play it early, so we're checking out the trial. So we're just going to do like a one fight here, so you guys can see how it's improved or uh, the difference between UFC 3 and 4. Now, this is, uh, to be honest, UFC is actually one of the biggest games on my channel. Uh, many, many years ago, I did a bunch of UFC videos, and they actually reached millions of viewers. So, it is still today one of the highest videos on the actual channel itself. Now, I've done, I streamed this on Twitch, where I did a little bit of the career mode. Um, it takes a lot to get into. This is not something that you can easily get into, and I will definitely tell you that this is more of a, a type of game that is very, very tough. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to turn down music here, because music, obviously, copyright reasons. So let's get this all the way down, or at least to the point that we don't have to worry about it too much. Alright, I think that's good enough for now. Um, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and just, like, kind of jump in. So we're going to go to fight now. I'm going to use my created character, and we're going to go up against someone in the real UFC. Now, I am nowhere near an expert, guys. I'm pretty bad at the game. It's been years since I've played it, so don't follow this video if you want to learn how to play or if you want to see someone do really, really well. I'm going to do the best that I can, um, always, so. We're going to be the blue. And I will choose my created character named Center Hooker. <laughs> just because they didn't have my a last name that I liked, so I just picked Hooker because they, they say your name or whatever, so... Um, you can choose what you want to be. So here's the thing. When you create a character, um, it kind of ups the stats for you. Um, when you're in career mode, you start out very, very low, but when you do like free play like this here, it'll always put your stats up to be equal to whatever the other person is that you're fighting, okay? So, what we're going to try to do is, we're going to go BJ, and we're going to choose, here's my question is, why would anybody choose anything other than this? Why would they choose Shark, when these stats are even better? So, we're going to choose Vanguard. Alright, and who we're going to go up against? We've got all your top fighters in the UFC. Of course, there's only just a few that I really know of. Obviously, George St. Pierre. Um, and if you go down here, where is he at? You also have Bruce Lee. But uh, it's downloadable content, so you have to download it. Or I'm sure it probably comes with a special edition. Then you have the man himself, Conor McGregor. And so we're going to go up against Conor McGregor. Um, I did a I did one fight on um, on Twitch where I was Connor against myself or whatever and I got a win against him so um, all right let's go ahead and pick that now my character really doesn't fit in the whole welterweight because he's like six three and it says he's like one hundred and 60 pounds, which it doesn't make much sense, but and I'll let everything up next is the UFC play out so you guys can see the uh, presentation. All right, well, he's one of the more accomplished strikers in this division. Sprawl and brawl, whatever you want to say, he's going to try to keep this fight standing tonight. It does not matter how he accomplishes it. All he wants to do is be on his feet and at range, hitting you with a beautiful jab, staying away from the grappling exchanges. You don't accomplish all the things that this man has accomplished over the course of his career without understanding distance. He has great distance management, which then in turn allows him to land all these beautiful diverse kicks, spinning back kick, jumping high kick, so many things he possesses that he will try to use tonight in this fight. Yeah, if this turns into a kickboxing match tonight, most it's people over. believe, yeah, his opponent is in a it's world over, of trouble. All right, so here he is, DC, the biggest superstar in mixed martial arts history, former two-division UFC champion Conor McGregor. And a lot of people thought maybe he wouldn't come back to the proven ground, 
He's got a lot to prove when it comes to his MMA legacy, and as such, McGregor returns to the octagon here tonight. When you talk about Conor McGregor, you're talking about a star that transcends mixed martial arts. We've seen a lot of people come and go, but no one has ever reached the level of Conor McGregor. And you think he's just a talker. No, there is a ton of substance to everything that he does. From the moment he stepped into the octagon, he said what he was gonna do, and he eventually did it from knocking guys out left and right to becoming a two division champion, knocked out Jose Aldo, knocked out Eddie Alvarez. There's just too much to say about the Notorious. And I'm glad you put it that way because he is this larger than life character and I think at times people lose sight of just how skilled a martial artist this is. Elite striker, tremendous distance management, few move better on the feet than Conor McGregor and he'll look to put those striking skills to good use yet again tonight as Conor McGregor returns. Our tale of the tape for this welterweight fight. More than five years apart. Some differences in height and reach as well. We go inside the octagon. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a kickboxer, making his professional debut here tonight. He stands six feet three inches tall, weighing in at 160 pounds. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, Hooker! And now with the his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a kickboxer, holding a professional record of 22 wins, four losses. He stands five feet nine inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds, fighting out of Dublin, Ireland, the notorious. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. The veteran Herb Dean draws the assignment here. Ready. You ready to fight? All right, here we go. Round one, outstanding matchup of strikers. Any chance this thing hits the canvas, team? I don't believe so. I think when you have two high-level strikers like you have in these two men, they're going to go to the center of the octagon, and it's going to be a kickboxing match. A kickboxing match that you would see in a ring. Tonight, you get to watch it inside of an octagon. Oh, and he connects there. His hands look good tonight. So fast. I mean, this guy has tremendous hands. Watch it. There's the early takedown. Pretty evident, DC, that he wants to get this fight to the ground. And he was certain, oh, might be able to get his leg here. And he does. he forces the miss from his opponent. Oh, and he's able to land a strike there from the bottom. Nicely done. Going for a leg now. You just have to follow it as much as you can when you're the one doing the submitting. It's actually not, it's not easy to do. This type of submitting is not easy to do. Very easy to get out of, as you can see. Now we can escape. You can go for the ground and pound. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. And he's back up again. So the takedowns have been there, as have the get-ups. Unable to connect there. 
Uh, he's always getting out of getting out of my reach. Oh, oh nice move. So under 30 seconds to go in what has been a pretty entertaining and active first round. Head kick there, blocked by Hook. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? Again, I am not a good player at all. As far as flying knees go, they don't get much cleaner than the one he landed in that round. Yeah, he landed it cleanly. And he did a lot of good work. But this is the thing. That flying knee is going to be what we remember when we talk about this fight. I think you got to throw one in the next fight. I'd never. <laughs> <laughs> you ready to fight? Ready. Second round underway. Blocks the shot. Try to establish that jab. Nice stick with the right hand. Both guys really throwing with authority. Ooh wee! Ooh wee! What a right hand by this young man. All right, so he's lit. What a big time takedown! Posturing up now, and now the damage is about to start. And back to his feet. Switching stances here. Ooh, big shot land. Just missing on the uppercut there. Nice strike by McGregor. Oh. I mean, Conor McGregor is a fantastic striker. Wow. Take down. Under three minutes now to go on the round. Beautiful movement, hip work on the ground here, just outstanding with the transition. He is not staying in one place on the ground, and that's very important. Check this slick movement where he stuck the leg back in the middle. Now he's gonna try to roll for a knee bar. Yeah, he got out of it. Oh, man, it's very, very sick. tough to get the submit in that. A lot of top pressure being applied here. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. There we go. Get it. Close guard. Oh, he turned around. McGregor gets back up again. So a much different approach for him here in this second round. He was a little bit tentative in round one, a little bit of a feeling out process. Now he has clearly found his rhythm, found the range. We'll see if he can continue with more activity here in round two. Take it down, cover, take it down, cover. Over and over to secure these takedowns. Lance a strike now from the bottom. Nice work there by McGregor. He needs to better move. move. Yeah, he's got to move. Jack. Very he's good at getting out of that, isn't he? Either get up or pull his opponent back into him so he doesn't have the posture to land that big damage. All oh, the ground and down strikes continue to rain down. The opponent better move out of harm's way or the referee's going to stop this. He better start to move. And when his opponent starts to posture, he needs to put his feet on the hip, push him away. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. So the fighter was really caught in a submission there just as the horn sounded. Safe to say he was saved by the bell there. So back to the stools they go. 60 seconds to recover here. We're going to fight on, ladies and gentlemen. Another round coming up. All right, a lot of high-level striking action in that last round. Daniel, take us through it, if you will. Tit for tat. Who has the best chin? It seemed as though they were looking for that answer. Both guys took risk. What a fantastic round. Ready to fight? Ready. All right, so here we go. Third and final round. Strong defense there to block the shot. Nice instincts. Well, we wondered earlier why there weren't as many body strikes. He's making up for lost time here. Shot to the body connects, and that bears watching. That's going to hurt this opponent. Look at him drive.
the shin into his own body with that body kick. Oh, coming up. Might have landed there instead. A swing and a miss. Spot McGregor. Big right hook coming. It's blocked. Oh, man. Look at that. Picture perfect. Got to the leg. Got to his position. Got another beautiful take down. Well, the ground and pound has been on point tonight. Good work here by Hooker. Pushing forward now with strikes, and now he's able to secure the takedown. Hooker's going for the leg. Might be a submission opportunity here. The problem with rolling leg lock in MMA, man, is you get beat like up. Like I said, it's very hard to get a submission in this game. It's too right, so easy for them to get out of it. And he's out. Well, not ideal to spend this much time on the bottom, but you can't fault him for his activity. Landing strikes here from the bottom. Nice work by McGregor. Back to the feet now. Well, he is really starting to apply a lot of pressure here down the stretch. Not as much offense earlier in the fight. He is making up for lost time now. I'm hoping that this is going to get me out. With two minutes and change to go in round three. Both fighters back to their feet now. Beautiful strike. Hooker's lower jaw now starting to show signs of swelling. Still nice body kick lands. Oh, how did he get that? Jeez, how did he get that off instead of me? Liver kick, if you take those kicks, it's going to shut your body off. You get up, you go down as another takedown attempt land. Nice hammer fist. Oh, and he's back up again. Those get-ups have been there for him all night. I want that, oh, nice job. I want that ground and pound, but he's just not giving it to me. See what he can do. He's going to start looking to land big shots from the top. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Final 10 seconds of the fight. Well, you got to stay busy on the bottom. He's doing it here. Nice punch. This is going to be, it's, I don't know, man. This could go either way. Decision is in. Bruce Buffer has it. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' score cards for a decision. To the winner, by yeah. decision, Hooker! Oh, well, congratulations to him there, and I think five years from now, they'll forget that it was a split and not a unanimous decision. That was a close fight. I mean, that was a very close fight, and that's the most uncomfortable decision in the world, to walk to the center not knowing if you did enough to get the job done. Fortunately, he did enough, and he got the victory. Now, there's still a lot I need to learn. I'm still pretty early in the game, so once I learn a little bit more about the ground game and how to um, get to the side, I haven't really learned how to get to the side. There's tutorials that you can go through, and I haven't really learned any of that stuff yet, so I'm still learning, still going off of the basic stuff. But as you can see, there's the stats. I had eight out of nine takedowns, which I'm sure helped. But total, I had 95 strikes, and I'm sure that that, like, really, really set it off. Round one, you can see each individual. It's, it's, a, it's a learning process to get into these games. You just don't start out by, like, being really good at it. You got to learn it. I mean, it's very intricate how everything works. Like, as far as the grappling system and getting them on the ground, the ground game is so different. Um, it's crazy. We're going to try knockout mode. So we just unleash punches and kicks, knees and elbows in this fast, fun, and furious mode. Let's try this. Um, I'm going to pick my creative fighter. And since we're doing this, we're going to do... 
powerhouse. And we'll go against... Um, these are, I guess, the top fighters in MMA right now, maybe. I don't know too much about them. We'll do George St. Pierre. I haven't tried this mode out yet, so let's take a look at it. Ready. Oh, it's like Bloodsport, or I guess Kickboxer. Ready. Fight. Show me what you got. Way bloodier. down. Wow. <laughs> okay, this is weird. Kumite. Kumite. a big one. Whiffed him. There we go. Oh, this could go anyway. He's gonna be the one who lands it. Got him. Oh man. Back to the arcades. That's pretty cool. Nice. I kind of like that mode. Super, I mean, super simple, easy, straight to the point. It's all about strikes. There's a very intricate system when it comes to actually using punches and stuff in this game. A lot of modifiers. Um, punches are done with the buttons, the face buttons. Uh, kicks are done with the face buttons. But then you modify them with LB or depending on what system you're on, L1. And you can change things around, uppercuts. I mean, there's just so many different styles of things that you can do. But there you go, ladies and gents. That's a look at UFC 4. What did you think of the gameplay? Let me know in the comments below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to leave a like. Let's see if we can get to at least 150 likes in this video. Um, and uh, thanks again for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.